Do you think that over time there will be a particular clone that's best suited to a particular set of climate and soil? Well, I'm not sure about that because everyone has their own winemaking philosophy and an opinion. They might think that the Australian clone will work well here or this one might work well there. Um, but for me, I think there's a lot of different interesting things coming to America now. 20 years ago, basically, 15 years ago, we'll say, even, there were basically only two or three clones of Syrah to choose from. You have the stuff from Davis, which is from Australia. You basically had the Durrell clone that was planted in the Durrell vineyard years ago. And that was basically everything that was planted up north, uh, all the way down to uh, probably Monterey County. And everything south of Monterey, the majority of it was basically planted from the Australia clone, which is brought in from, some people call it the Estray River clone, which because that's because it was planted in the 70s in the Australia River vineyard. And some people call it the Chicoutier clone because it was apparently grafted from some Chicoutier clones uh, from Hermitage. I'm not sure exactly, but I do work with that uh, clone in Santa Barbara County in the Thompson vineyard. And that clone now has gone from, uh, from Hermitage to Paso Robles to Zach of Mesa, to Thompson Vineyard, so it's never been on rootstock either. So this is the fifth generation of grafting, the fourth generation of grafting, never been on rootstock. And it's completely different than uh, the stuff that we're getting from other beans. Um, but it does have a little bit of meat roll now, a bit of virus, and it's naturally very low yielding. But a lot of the older producers in Santa Barbara County, if they were going to plant a vineyard now, that would be the one that is the typical epitome of what they really want to make out of California Syrah. Because of the flavors that it gives or because of its resistance to rots? The flavor. It's the flavor. Yeah. That's, and I think that's part of that because that's what they're accustomed to. They've been working with it for so long, um, it's, uh, they know what that's going to give them. Um, but there's a lot of new stuff coming in now. There's new nurseries. You know, you had Bob Haas, um, the Tallest Creek plantings back in the 90s, bringing all that stuff from Chateau de Pop. Now you have Montauk bringing stuff in from uh, the south of France also. So now there's got to be at least 20 plus clones of Syrah all over California. And so when folks are making their choices, whether they're like a startup winemaker or even one that has a lot of experience, what they're doing is going to a nursery like Montauk and choosing from a library of different. Yeah, and there's also rootstock, so to answer deeper into your question as far as rootstock, what you're planning with your clone, um, I think the rootstock has a lot to do with it also because that can be resistant or uh, you can work better in sandy soils and things like that. So it's a, it's a very big spectrum of how you do choose these. Um, but to me, when someone, if you were to come to me and say, I want to plant a new vineyard, would you like to be involved in making wine for my place, then I would probably say let's deal with some of the newer clones because I know what the older ones are doing. Which is not right or wrong by saying that, it's just this is an experiment. Let's see if we can do something new. Because maybe in 20 years we try a new clone, we might say this is the one. But right now we don't know because there's so much choice. We're so young. That raises a lot of interesting questions to, to me about like intervention. If you're not interventionist wondering, if you're making all these deliberate choices in terms of flavor profiles that you want to show. Yeah.